Sue McMahon and I'm co-creator of Women's Weekly magazine and I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate fudge cake. So the cake is basically an all-in-one mixture. So I've already got the eggs and the golden syrup in the mixing bowl and I'm going to tip in all the other ingredients for the cake. So the flour, the sugar. Actually, sometimes it helps just to break the sugar up a little bit because sometimes the soft sugar can form lumps. And the cocoa and the melted chocolate. I'm using a dark 70% chocolate for this to give a good flavour. Then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I don't normally measure it, I just guess the amount. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. The water. And the butter is at room temperature, so it's fairly soft. Now, just in case the mixture flies out of the bowl, I'm going to cover the mixer with a clean tea towel before I switch it on. So once the ingredients are all in there, I can then increase the speed. Okay, so once I've got a nice smooth cake batter, I'll scrape the mixture off the beater and then give the mixture a stir again. Now I'm going to divide this between the two greased cake tins. If you want to be really accurate and make sure the cakes are going to be the same height, you can actually put the cake tins on a scales and weigh it to make sure you get the same amount in each tin and then spread the mixture out. And then these need to go in the oven at 190 degrees centigrade for about 25 to 30 minutes. So when the cake is cooked, I leave it to cool in the tins for about 10 minutes and then turn it onto a wire rack and leave the cakes to cool completely. Now, for the frosting for the cake, I've melted the chocolate so it's nice and liquid and I'm going to add the sour cream. This will set fairly quickly because the cream is nicely chilled. So I'm going to use a whisk to mix it together. So when the frosting is nice and smooth, then it's ready to use. So I'm going to take one of the halves of the cake and take away the lining paper and rest it on my cake plate. Now I'm going to put some of the frosting over this. And then I'm going to take the other half of the cake, remove the lining paper and then turn it so it sits on top. So the two bases of the cakes are together in the middle. Now I'm going to use the rest of the frosting to spread over the top and the sides of the cake. So first of all I spread it over so it's fairly even and then you can texture it using the palette knife. Because you don't want too thick a layer of it on the top. So I'm doing some patterns going in and out of the centre. You need to work fairly quickly because the icing does begin to set. So that's my finished cake. All I need to do now is clean off the cake plate before I serve it.